There it is. Wondrous. Um, so, I, mean, uh, I, I think that that area has that sort of focus stuff. I mean, I, obviously, I've been my own. And I put in the chat for everyone to mute themselves, but Bobby, uh, Bobby Joe, you can obviously. I can do that too. Mute at your leisure, just so we can hear you clearly. And um, yeah. Awesome. Well, it looks like most everybody is muted. Perfect. Man, there must be, you're getting a big draw today, Bobby Joe. I don't know if it's that two word first name or it's just people don't know what clear cooperation is <laughs> all about, but you're bringing the milkshake to the yard. It's a strong <laughs> showing today. I like that. Yay. Well, I'm glad. And, and I can't blame it on free food, right? Because normally it's the food that brings people. <laughs> Oh, awesome. excited to see and hear a new face besides me. I'm certain of it. <laughs> we'll take it away without further ado. It's 1037. It's clear cooperation. Put your hands together, everybody, in this fashion for Bobby Joe Nugent with Real Tracks. <laughs> Yay. Well, this is awesome. I'm so glad to see everybody join us today. And even though it is for... Um, a lovely topic of clear cooperation <laughs> and hopefully we can get in some other information too or answer any questions that you all may have as we go through. Um, but actually, we are going to start out going over a few things about clear cooperation. Here's how I kind of want to, I guess, roll with this as far as how about we start kind of sharing a few things about clear cooperation, trying to make it as clear as possible. And then if you all have certain one-off situations as far as, oh, well, what about this specific situation? If it's nothing in general that you think may happen on a regular basis, let's treat those as one-off situations and think we're always gonna have those and there's always gonna be some questions about how do we exactly deal with this particular situation? Um, and we're even gonna have questions on our end. So this is all new for everybody. Um, but let's just go over some of the basics of clear cooperation. And then if you have questions about that, um, or maybe something that you've heard that you just want to get cleared up, then definitely we will straighten all of that out. Um, but I'm going to start by making it pretty simple. Um, clear cooperation is helping you follow your ethics and guidelines of being a real estate agent. So when we think about that, the MLS is all about cooperation and compensation, right? So meaning every listing agreement that you have signed, you are required to put that property in the MLS system and share it with every one of your coworkers. And we'll call them coworkers here because we know that's what they are. So we're all in this business for the same reason. We are trying to list properties, sell properties, right? And we want to share that with everybody out there. So we're trying to keep it on that level playing field. Now this rule for us has not always been called clear cooperation, but it's been one of the very first rules that we always have with the listing agreement is basically we say, when you get your listing agreement signed, you have 48 hours to put that property in real tracks, right? And that's always been a real tracks rule. Even before clear cooperation ever came about, we always had that rule but there were a few things that came about from NAR's rule that allowed us to, I guess, spiff that up just a little bit or change the verbiage of that. So we do have some options, right? Every seller has an option. So naturally, if you get your listing agreement signed, there is a conversation that you'll wanna have with that seller that says, do we want to publicly market this property? And if that is the case, then we must put that property into the MLS system within that 48 hour time frame, right? If your seller says, you no, know, maybe we have some privacy issues, we don't want that property to go out to our MLS system, then there is a form that needs to be signed. But I would say this, have a conversation and ask your seller a couple of questions. One, why is it that they don't want it on the MLS system? Okay, maybe one reason they come back and say, well, we, maybe we're going through a divorce situation. We just want this property to be um, not necessarily a secret, but we just don't want to put a sign in the yard. We don't want it going out to all of those public portals on the internet where people can see everything. 
Maybe I'm somebody famous and I just don't want to be out there on those public portals. So there is a way in Realtrax where you can still put it in our system as a listing, but only keep it for those 15, 16,000 realtors that are out there to see. It doesn't have to go out to all of those third party portals where it's on the internet. It doesn't even go to Realtracks.com, so it specifically stays on Realtracks.net. Now that can be done through your listing process, and I don't mind pulling that up on the screen so you all can see that, but that is something that can be done. So maybe it's not a matter of, I don't want to be on the MLS, it's a matter of, I don't want to be out there in the world. And Realtracks has something that will fix that for you, right, where you can still market and you can still show the property, but, we're just not gonna put it on the public portals, okay? So I'll show you that in a minute if anybody has questions on how to make that happen. The other thing that we have that's something similar to it is our coming soon status. So I do wanna explain coming soon a little bit, but there's a lot of kind of conflicting um, news or words that are going on with coming soon too. So coming soon is the option to say, hey, I do wanna put that property in Realtrax because I do wanna publicly market it. However, we're not ready to start showing that property yet. So we need to wait for the professional cleaners to come out. We need to wait for pictures. So in 48 hours, I'm not gonna be ready to have that property showing, but I know I've gotta have it in the MLS. So that is what coming soon is for. If you're not ready to start showing that property, you've got some work to do, you're waiting on photos, whatever that may be, coming soon will not go out to third party portals either. So it is still kind of on the private side of Realtrax, but that allows you to market that property. If you still wanted to market it in on Facebook or flyers or anything like that, you can still do that. However, coming soon really says, I'm not ready to show it. So you cannot show a property that is in a coming soon status. Now, Coming soon also has a few things that kind of go on in the background. So days on market is not considered when a property is in coming soon. Those are, days on market's not counting. And then also when the property is in coming soon, that price that you put on there, that may be one thing. We just haven't really seen a price that we are solid on. We're still trying to iron that out. Well, a price is required for you to put a property into the MLS system, even if it's incoming soon. But that price does not set as the original list price. It doesn't even show up in the history of that property. So if you are not really set on a list price, you can put a guideline there. Maybe it's just a random five ninety nine 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 nine, right? Then before it goes to active and y'all have decided on a price, go in and change that price when it's in coming soon. And then that way, when it goes to the active status, whatever price it is, once it hits active, that is set as the original list price. So again, nobody can see that history and they can't go back and say, oh, well, why did it start at 599999 and you listed it for 650? So they can't see that history. They can't see that original price. It's only what it was set at when it went to the active status. So that's something important to know too. And then when you think about how many days can a property be set in a coming soon status? So there really isn't a time frame other than 30 day increments. So if I put a property in coming soon, I've got 30 day date calendar that I can pick which day do I want it to go active. But maybe I choose day 30 right? Because I still know we're waiting on a lot of things. Well, if day 29 comes around and I'm still not ready for that property to go live or go active, I can extend that out for another 30 days. So what we don't want is that word soon to become a year. So we just make that 30 day increment to where you have to touch that listing. You have to do something with it every 30 days. So really it will become an annoyance for you if you want to sit it out there for a year incoming soon. So we just want you to maintain it, make sure you're keeping an eye on that. So that's some things to think about with coming soon. The biggest part that a, people, a lot of people don't understand is that the showings are prohibited. 
when a property is in coming soon. If you are ready to show it, it needs to be in an active status. Okay. So I've got a couple of questions that came in about coming soon. All right, so the first one talked about, I saw a coming soon listing on Zillow. So we do not send our coming soon properties to Zillow. Now this may be something where somebody has an account with Zillow and they manually input that property on Zillow, but as far as Realtrack sending out coming soon properties, they do not go to any other website out there. So only on our Realtrack system where agents see our coming soons, unless somebody has manually input that onto another site. All right, and then shows up on HomeSnap. So that could be a possibility, but HomeSnap is just for real estate agents uh, as far as your side of it. Anything on the public side, they wouldn't see. I'd have to double check for sure about HomeSnap. Ah, and then the history. The history on HomeSnap. Okay, so that's something. I'm gonna make a note of that really quick. Um, just making sure that we talk to HomeSnap about that price history. All right, I already had my notebook. I knew I'd probably be making some notes here. Okay, got that one down. So I'll double check with HomeSnap, um, but again, they should only be showing if they are showing coming soon, they should only be showing those on the agent's side of that. And I will check on the price history of coming soon with HomeSnap. So I can see where we may have some issues with that. All right, seems to be all the questions we had so far about coming soon. Um, so I do want to clarify that coming soon is an option for you. So if you are not ready, we want you to go ahead and grab that seller. Any opportunity you have to grab a seller, get a listing agreement signed, grab your seller. So that 48 hour time frame, we don't want you to hold back on that. Just have your ducks in a row as far as how are you going to proceed with that listing. So if we're just not ready to show it, put it in coming soon, All right? Cannot show it if it's in coming soon. If the seller truly has privacy issues and they don't want that property to go out, we do have an exempt option for you. So I am gonna share my screen really quickly so everybody knows where to find this if an exempt listing is the way that you wanna go. Um, now I'm gonna pull it up, open to Realtracks so we can see here um, where to find these documents. If I truly had an exempt listing, Again, this is one that I cannot publicly market. My seller must agree with that. My broker must agree with that. And I have to sign this form as well and submit that form to Realtracks. So if you go right up here to my listings, you're gonna see a section called listing forms. Now, when I click on listing forms, if I just simply scroll down to the bottom, there is a seller's waiver of cooperation and public marketing I know what it says from. Um, we have reported this a couple of times. So this form is the one that you want to submit to Realtracks. Now the email address that you can submit that to is data at Realtracks.com. Now that form has to be on file if you truly have the exempt listing situation, okay? If you decide that, all right, we wanna start marketing this property now, but I have an exempt form on file, then we say, that's fine. You don't have to let us know about that. All we ask you to do is within 48 hours of marketing that property, you just put it in real tracks as a listing. So if you think about it, it all goes back to the marketing of the property. If you wanna market the property, make sure it's in real tracks within 48 hours. Now, when we talk about public marketing, is everybody aware of what we consider public marketing? If not, let me show you another form. So you can find this one if you just simply go into the Realtracks Help, Help Center, 
And right up here in your search bar, if you type clear cooperation, it will take you to this documentation right here. And what I find really helpful is to use our little graphic, makes things easy. What is considered public marketing? And it's all right here. Right? Flyers, those are obvious. Yard signs, any type of digital marketing on public facing websites, right? broker website displays, showings, broker open houses, any type of email campaign and social media. So some of this is pretty straightforward and some of this you may think, oh, I didn't realize that was considered public marketing. So any of that, basically when we think if it's out there on the World Wide Web, we can see it somewhere, that is gonna be considered public marketing. Now, if I came across somebody at the store and they said, hey, I'm really looking in this area, do you happen to know of anything coming about? And you just so happen to have an exempt listing in that area and you say, well, yes, I have a property coming up in that area. That's not public marketing, right? Now, what may change that a little bit is if you go up to the front desk and customer service and you say, hey, can you announce that I have a listing in this area? Now we're considered public marketing, right? So once it is in a broad spectrum, if it's just one-on-one -on -one conversation, you're fine. If you just show that property to a potential buyer that has come up to you and asked to see it, you're fine. It's just that big picture marketing or that public marketing that we're concerned with with those exempt listings. All right, so that has brought up a couple of chats. So let me address those. All right, so clarify the private realtor coming soon group falls in or out of this public marketing. Okay, so the private realtor coming soon group is considered public marketing. Right, and um, so if it goes outside of your office or your one on one conversation no. with anybody else, that is now considered public marketing. That is a really good question, and um, that's uh, 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 consider hang on just a second, I'll take care of that. <laughs> so, consider this. Fair. All right, if you have a listing and you think, well, I just wanna put it on my private realtor group, okay? Think about Realtracks as your private realtor group, okay? Why would you not wanna open that up to 16,000 versus 200 in your private realtor group? So in that case, if it goes outside, of your one-on-one -on -one conversations outside of your office walls, that is considered public marketing. So in that case, be sure it goes in real tracks within that 40 year time frame. And that's what I tell people too. If you wanna put it on your private coming soon group, that's okay. But within two days, it's gotta be in real tracks after you marketed that in your private group. All right, so Angela, when you say, can you text? So if it is a mass text, then of course, no. But if it is that one-on-one -on -one text, hey, Bobby Joe, I got a listing coming up, that's okay. But if it is just that mass group text, then that's something that we cannot do. All right, so within your brokerage advertising, village only. And um, so that would be okay. Here's the thing though, um, as far as, I know Colin had kind of given me a heads up on some, um, office rules or office policies that you may have in place and that may be different from what we say but again it's hard to keep that advertising once i've spread it to a mass group even let's just say village once i've spread it to all of my folks in village is it going to be really easy to keep it within that group or is that mass text going to turn into a forward to this person that's out of your control and you didn't know well, this person now just forwarded that on to their best friends and their special private group that you had no control over and you didn't know what happened, but it's all gonna kind of fall back on you. So holding control of that and saying it's gotta stay within these four walls is very difficult, right? Um, so we no longer have it started out. We've made some changes with clear cooperation as time has gone on, 
to where we started out to where you could have an office office exclusive. Um, and that's really not in the rules anymore, office exclusive properties. The verbiage is not even there. Um, but we do say, of course, within your four walls, you can talk about it as far as with the with the office. But like I said, it's going to be very hard to contain that within the office to where it's not getting outside of there. Um, and then we also had some issues too, where it's saying our clear cooperation, our exempt form is truly for privacy issues to where somebody does not want to be out there in the public. Um, and if there is truly a privacy issue, then sharing that with 500 people is not going to be private. So we're just trying to um, kind of cover our grounds and say, here's a way that you can remain private if you need to with that exempt option. All right. I wanted to clarify that point as well. Um, just ahead, Colin. So understands that on May 7th, um, our CEO president and I, we, we made a judgment call that when the office exclusive looked like it was going to be removed and there was a lot of confusion around it, that we said the, the village marketing for even for exempt properties um, could not be using our digital platforms because it's too easy for people to share them and spread them around and potentially get people in trouble. So um, that's why we have said, if you're gonna post in our coming soons at the sales meeting, or if you're gonna post on our Facebook group, you need to be in the MLS in 48 hours, even as an exempt property. Awesome, and that, it does. That just makes it simple. That makes it easier um, to where you can simply say any type of marketing to a mass group within 48 hours, it needs to be in the MLS system, cooperating with everyone. All right, so then we have a question. If your client has asked you to float the property as a coming soon to your brokerage in order to see what type of feedback you get, um, all right, so as far as seeing about your feedback, and, and again, here is the whole situation is once you have that listing agreement signed, if you wanna float it, around your company as a coming soon, that's okay. But again, it's just that two day time frame to get your feedback, right? It's that 48 hours. So just think about that. And again, if it is a coming soon, then certainly just put it in the system as a coming soon property. Um, and that's okay to handle it that way if you want to, but it's just kind of saying you've got that 48 hours to toy with and get your feedback within that 48 hours, get everything you need, put in your marketing within 48 hours to your special groups within 48 hours, and then it must be available for the rest of the MLS to see that property. All right. So hopefully that helps a little bit too. You're trying to get some feedback, price, things like that. Just make sure it's within that 48 hours and then get it on the MLS for everybody else. All right. All right, so Angela has a good question too. Can you show it in that 48 hours to agents, clients in your brokerage? Absolutely. So you can show it to anybody within that 48 hour time frame. Here's the deal though. If you've shown that property, it cannot go in the system as a coming soon. So if you've shown it within the 48 hours, it has to go in the system as an active listing, All right? So really in coming soon, no showings at all. And that's one of the things with coming soon's that people don't understand either, is that if you've shown it prior to putting it in or you're gonna show it at all, it cannot be in the coming soon status. All right, so that was a really good question to clarify as well. Okay. All right, so what other kind of questions do we have about clear cooperation? Anybody have anything for me with that? I guess the easiest thing to say is within 48 hours, right? You get a listing agreement signed within 48 hours, make a decision. Is it going to be truly exempt, no marketing at all on that property? Or are you going to list it? And I think I went through that whole process as far as 
if it's in an exempt status, we have the paperwork on file and you want to now start marketing that property. It just needs to go in real tracks within 48 hours. You do not have to notify us. You do not have to say, hey, let's remove that exempt form now. Just put it in the system. So that's the 48 hour time frame, right? When you start publicly marketing that property, even if it were in an exempt status before, within 48 hours of marketing it, put it in the system. And again, you don't have to notify us, just put it in, all right? And then we did have some questions as far as, well, what happens when that property closes? So I had a property that's in the exempt status. We didn't publicly market it. We followed all of those rules but it has closed. I want to put that property in the MLS system now for comp purposes. And believe me, we want it there too, right? So data is key. We want all the information in that system that we can have, especially for comps when it comes around to that time. So when a property closes that is in an exempt status, we must have the exempt form on file. But if we have that exempt form on the file and you want to put it in the system, you will go through and put it in um, you're not going to be able to select the correct dates, so we'll just have you send us over the um, listing agreement um, and then the contract, and then we will go back in and make some changes to all of those dates so you can have that credit um, and we can have the comps in our system for that exempt property. All right, so that may have drawn a question. Um, all right. So have we seen an uptick of properties closed for comp purposes only? And I'd have to go and ask our data department, but nobody has mentioned anything about seeing an increase in properties just going in as a closed status. And we did a lot of monitoring the coming soon status to make sure properties were not being, I guess what we should say, um, really misused as far as just sitting and coming soon until they go straight to closed. So we did monitor that quite a bit and we didn't have a whole lot of properties going from coming soon straight to under contract to close. Now naturally we did have some that will do that and those may be legit, right? You can take offers on coming soon properties, contingent upon seeing that property. So we do have some properties that go from coming soon to under contract straight to close, but we didn't see a huge misuse of it. Um, when we ran our status or our statistics. So I can go in and see if we've had any extra comp purpose only situations that have come in um, as a result of this. Um, and originally we had the comp purposes only option was for properties that were listed outside of Realtrack. So for example, for sale by own properties, um, we had maybe a property where somebody had listed it in Kentucky and you sold it because you had a Kentucky license and you wanted it to go in there. So if it just wasn't in there from a listing agent within our system, we allowed you to put those properties in there. Um, and that's really where our comp purposes option came into play. But now that we have this exempt option, there may be more of that. So we'll continue to monitor that. Colin, I can get back to you and see what I find out on that. All right. Okay, so this is a good question too. So someone can show as a coming soon, as long as it's active within 48 hours, that's allowed. If it's in real tracks in the coming soon status, it cannot be shown. If you have a coming soon, and you're going to put it in real tracks in the 48 hour time frame and you show it before it gets in real tracks within that 48 hours that is okay it just cannot go into a coming soon status once you've shown it within that 48 hours right so yes as long as it goes in as active you could have shown that property within your 48 hour time frame before you got it in the real track system so that is allowed. And I believe that's what you were asking the way you have it worded, as long as it's active within the 48 hours. If it was in there as coming soon, you cannot show it. All right. All right, anything else we have? 
as clear as can be with clear cooperation, just that easy. I was kind of expecting some more confusion with that. All right, so it can be a coming soon on Facebook and shown and active on real tracks within 48 hours. Yes, that is true. So we may have some folks that end up submitting or turning in agents who have shown a property, but what we're gonna go back to is that whole listing agreement, making sure you had it within your 48 hours, you had it in real tracks prior to that 48 hours, it is up to you. If we have an exempt form on, on file for that, um, that's okay too. Um, and we'll let folks know because we are having a lot of agents that are submitting properties in the system with signs in the yard and they're not in real tracks. So we do go in through, what we're trying to do now is we're trying to educate everybody. So instead of going in with force and saying, ah, you gotta do this, here's your fine. We're trying to educate everybody right now and make sure everybody is understanding clear cooperation and all of these rules. Um, but yes, so you've got 48 hours. You can do whatever you want to within those 48 hours, but we will be checking listing agreements, um, making sure the dates match up and the property was input in the system or we had an exempt form on file for that. All right, Deborah, does that clear it up for you? All right, you're welcome. Thanks for asking questions. All right, what else do we have? Ah, okay, so let's see where our fine schedule is. So I'm gonna go to Realtrax, kind of showing you the process or the flow of how to get to our rules and regulations, how to research what fines are, where they are, and what can we get in trouble for. So if you go right up here to help, go into your help center, you can simply find by scrolling down to the bottom, you're gonna see Realtrax rules. If I click on Realtrax rules and open that up, you're gonna see just rules changes, but if you want the entire rule book you can simply click right here mls rules it is page 23 that could change over time where our rules are but here's something that's pretty cool is instead of trying to figure out through these 25 pages where does it talk about clear cooperation where does it talk about these fees and these fines that i could incur for any of this so if you know how to use any type of word document search it works here on this rules and regulations document. So I'm not on a Mac, so I'm gonna hit Control F. Those of you that are on a Mac, it's Command F. And once you simply use that combination, you'll see this search box somewhere on your screen. And I simply type in that keyword that I'm looking for. So I could type in clear cooperation, I could type in fines, whatever I wanna do. So if I want to do that, I'm just going to type fines, for example, sorry, I've got to be able to spell it. And then I just hit enter and it goes straight through that document, highlighting the word that I was looking for. So right here, it tells me it's on page 23. I can scroll to page 23. I can hit enter again and it just goes down through that document looking for that keyword, right? So I'm just gonna scroll to page 23 since I know where that's at. I just wanted to share that with you so you didn't have to sit there and read the entire page thinking, oh, did I miss something as I was going through there? All right, so here is our fine schedule. All right, again, making sure you have a listing agreement signed in order to put that property in the Realtrack system. And really, most of this is just communication, cooperation, all this is. And even with our fines, again, we take the route of educating you first before we just slap you with a fine. So we are very nice people at Real Tracks. We work with you. Um, however, if 
you have violated a rule once. We take that education role and we simply say, hey, you can't do this, just fix it, we're cool, right? But if we see that you then do the same thing two more times, three more times, it's on a consistent basis and we reach out to you, that's when the fines come into play, right? And even so, we are not mean people at Real Tracks. We're not here to make money off of this. I'm not encouraging you to do wrong just so you can pay the fines. But if a fine is paid, we send that money to our charity, Tennessee Kids Belong. So again, we are not making money off of this. We just want a good system where everybody is communicating and cooperating and compensating. So as long as you're following those rules, you should be good to go to where none of these fines will be a part of that. But that's where they are specifically. Um, if you need to know those that relate straight to clear cooperation, then I would just go right up here to your keyword search, type in clear cooperation, and it will take you to those. We have some rules that don't have fines associated with them. So you can see here, there's your 48 hours of any public marketing. Going through some specifics for clear cooperation there. So we know where to find them. We know where it's written. All right, check out some more chats we've gotten. All right, so we see, are you flagging homes that go under contract within hours of going active to help enforce? So we don't really flag anything. We do random searches just to see if there's any type of manipulation of our rules and of our data. Um, so this is something that we will look for, for things that go straight from active to under contract to closed. Um, but really, sometimes that happens especially in a market like today things like that happen so as long as paperwork is being produced that will back it up then we're good right so if those types of things start to increase we will look into it more we will start requesting paperwork to hopefully help educate those of how the process works yeah <laughs> so then and followed up with that Right, to Deborah's point, it seems like 48 hours is plenty of time to go under contract. How are you determining which are fine and which are violations? So that's just going back to requesting paperwork if it becomes an issue. Um, so we'll go back and ask for listing agreements, making sure that properties are going into the system within that 48 hour time frame based on the list date. Um, and just to clarify this too, making sure you all know, when a property goes into real tracks, there is a list date field the list date field is your listing agreement date. The date you got listing agreement signed. It's not the date that you made it active in real tracks. So make sure you're putting the proper list date on your listings when you input those into real tracks as well. All right, and then Andrea has a question that says, I have an older agent tell me, even though he puts signs in yards, he never advertises in the MLS. He has loads of investment properties and will have a cluster coming to market in a few weeks, but will not put on MLS. All right, so all you have to do with those, what we would like is we would like, um, of course, you to submit the agent name and the property. So it's pretty hard to go to an agent and say, hey, do you have an MLS agreement or a listing agreement for all of your properties you have in the market without us knowing which ones they are? So it's helpful to have as much information as possible on those properties for you to submit those. Um, it's hard for Realtrax to police that because we just don't know. We don't get all of those um, really what we can call spam emails. We just don't get the mass emails all the time. So if you are aware of this, you can submit that. So it's almost like you all are self-policing yourself with this um, as far as submitting those to us and then we will reach out to that agent. But it's hard for us to know all of this and police it um, without having some insight on that going on. So yeah, just let us know about that and we'll reach out and make sure those folks are following the rules just as you are.
All right, anything else? Any other questions we have about that? All right, well, this brought up lots of good questions. Um, anybody have any questions on real tracks? Just using it in general, a lot of the um, changes that we're making, good, bad, ugly. All right, so Anne, you've also said you see Facebook ads saying they have lots of coming soon and to get in touch, advertising to the public, violation, yes. Yes, it is a violation if those properties are not in real tracks, provided they have that listing agreement signed. So again, just shoot those over, just send us the Facebook ad. If you just wanna take a screen snapshot of that Facebook ad, send it to me, send it to data at realtracks.com, whoever you wanna send that to. Um, I do also want to share with you all my contact information. So if you need to get in contact with me, you can use, this is my business card. So we've turned virtual and everything. Not able to see you and hand you out a physical card. So here it is, QR code, the old fashioned way. If you have an iPhone, and you want to open up your camera, you don't have to take a picture of this. All you have to do is be on the camera and zoom into the QR code, and it will ask you if you'd like to add me to your contact. So feel free to do that. Reach out to me anytime you have questions like this. If there are those certain one-off situations where you just wanna clarify it before you take action, um, be sure to do that. Always reach out again. We are nice people. We work with you, we understand your business. Um, so feel free, reach out, and we'll help you with anything you need help with. All right, Rebecca has a question about client portal. And that is in order for a client to be able to use the client portal, they can only sign up with either Gmail or through Facebook. That is true. I had a client that neither has a Gmail address or uses Facebook. All right. Um, if we continue to get several requests for this, we, we can open that up for more ways to log in and use that client portal. So if you will do this for me, Rebecca, um, I can take it back word of mouth, but it doesn't mean as much if it's coming straight from you. So if you will, and this is kind of for everybody to see too, if you go into Real Tracks. I'm going to switch my screens here for a minute again. I'll pop back up my business card in just a little bit if you need to see that. But if we want to go back into Real Tracks and submit some feedback, so just like this, we're saying, hey, I have someone that is looking at signing up for Client Portal. I want them to use it, but they don't have Google or Facebook. Can we get some more options? So here's how we want that feedback to come in. If you go right up here to help, submit a ticket. When you go into submit a ticket, you are gonna see here ways of filling this form out. Filling in the blanks is really all it is, but request type is what's important. So for you, Rebecca, if you will go into feedback and submit the feedback. So this says, I know how it works, I understand how it works, I have a suggestion because my client needs to get in this, I want them to use it, they don't have Google or Facebook. Any other way we can open that up for more options. So that would be more like feedback. If you are finding somebody who is not submitting their listings into real tracks, submit a ticket, listing violation, You need to fix something on your listing and you can't do that. Listing correction. You got a question about the system or a problem right here. So feedback is a really great way to go into um, the system and submit. Again, questions, issues, suggestions, anything you may have. Um, one of the other things that we are working on is finding a way for you to easily report a listing. All right, so we have a lot of calls that come in, hey, this has the wrong school zones. Hey, this is not displaying square footage correctly, all right? 
So those types of things, as far as reporting those without having to go up here to help, submit a ticket, filling in all the blanks, we are going to come up with something that exists on a listing form, whether that be under the more menu, somewhere on that, that page where you can easily submit that listing as a violation. And sometimes they're not all violations. We do look into each and every one of them. But if you look at a picture and you think it's a two car garage and the listing says it's a three car garage and you submit that and say, this is wrong, we do look into that. So maybe it truly is a three car garage, right? And the agent has said, yes, you can fit three cars in there, even though it only looks like there's two doors, you can fit two in one part of it. So those are the things we'll look into making sure it is truly a violation or inaccurate information. Um, but we're going to make that easier to submit those listings as violations or inaccurate data. So we're just trying to make sure the system has good data for you all to use. All right, any other questions about real tracks? New changes? Oh, let me share this with you because we had some quite a bit of feedback about our new photo gallery. So I just want to clarify some things. I mentioned this up front with us making changes to the old site. Um, we are moving towards a new search page and it's going to be really cool. It's not going to be a huge change. But if you start using it underneath search, it's right here, new listing search. Now it's not complete. It's not finished. There's a lot of things that we're going to continue to add to this, such as things where you can search a cross class search within your one search page. You can do an MLS number search right here from your basic search page. So these types of things we're simplifying. So this menu here at the top where we have all of these property classes and MLS number, all of this will eventually go away because it's gonna be in one search page. You won't have to choose all of that each time. So those things are gonna be easier, but again, we're not finished with this, such as additional criteria is coming to this, more options are coming to this search page. So this is just a basic beta site that you can certainly play with. Uh, but I do want to show you kind of the differences in that photo gallery because one of the complaints that we've had is the photos are smaller. And the reason they are is because the old system that we're working on, that old product, is not allowing us enough space to make those photos larger. So to see what they will look like in the future, it's already in play where if I did a search on my new search page, let me fill in something here really quickly to narrow this down for us. I'm sorry, you can see my fingers as I'm typing, but. All right, and then. All right, so I'm wanting to see our new photo gallery what that looks like. If you've seen on the um, public side how they look, that's how your new photo gallery will look as well. So we still have some feedback coming in about the photo gallery, even such things as maybe descriptions here on pictures. We'll figure that out along the way. If you all have um, suggestions for that, let us know. Feedback on that, let us know that as well. We'll do anything we can do here to make your life a little easier but you can see the pictures are much larger here in the new version versus the old version of that system right so that was using the new real tracks search where you can see what that photo gallery is intended to look like but our current search where you're using just residential or land is limited by that little box that opens up for those large pictures to fit into. So we're struggling a little bit there. We're trying to make some changes, but that is working within an old frame for a new product. So if there's something that you see that we've made a change, it just doesn't look right on your search, try going to the new search to see how it will look in the future if that makes a difference as you're going through it. 
And if you have no idea what I'm talking about with the photo gallery and how that's displayed, let me pop in something for you real quick. All right. So that would be in your full view. You're seeing right underneath the photo, right here, the camera clip. And you're also seeing documents that would be attached, virtual tours, anything like that would be at the top. But I can get straight to the additional photos here. And this is that gallery view. So this is kind of where they're saying the photos are a lot smaller. If you need something in the meantime, until that new format takes place, we have given you kind of that back to the old or what we call the legacy gallery. And that takes you back to the old photo display. So there's a way to get back there, giving you that option until we get to that new version. All right, I think I had a couple of chats that came in. So let me check those real quick. Yay, okay. <laughs> Is there any thought how to truly separate condo and single family home? Although you select single family home, I still find townhome condos in my search. All right, so that's a little bit of policing that we're gonna have to do if you find that simply submit those to us and we will get that corrected on those listings. We'll reach out to that agent. You will be out of the picture altogether. They don't know that you submitted that listing um, to us, but here's the thing. What we tried to do with type, site built and then condos and HPRs. What we tried to do there is look into the tax records and whatever the tax records would classify it, we would go ahead and automatically make that selection on a listing to make sure we had more accurate information. However, every county tax records are different and they have so many terms to define these things that just do not work out for us easily to categorize those properties into one of our types, property types here. So that proved to be a little bit more difficult um, than what we wanted it to be. So if you all can think of a better way to do that, it is all based on the agents, how they're inputting their data. Um, we would want them to put that in there correctly. And maybe it's just, again, educating. What do these mean? What is the difference in an HPR and a condo and a townhouse? So for you all, even to share if you're not aware of this, to help you all out, and then again, to share with other agents out there, there are definitions for each one of these in our system. That again is under the help pages. So if I go here to our help center, and at the very top, I type in here property type. I will see that there is definitions for property type, whoops. And those definitions, residential property types defined. So I click there and it will define every one of those property types that we have. So again, that's helpful for you. That may be helpful to pass along to somebody as well where you see they've put it in the wrong category and you can share this with them. So hopefully in the future, just like we do educate and hopefully we'll get those folks on the right course. Yes, so yes, submit them, we'll get them corrected. It's just as easy as that. All right, Colin, you said Village has a waiver form the seller signs to waive the 48 hour requirement to go onto the MLS. Should we discuss that briefly? Yes. <laughs> um, so if you all have a form, um, then I guess what we either need to do is figure out a way to incorporate our form and just replace yours with ours, the exempt form, or if you all still need your form, just add the exempt form as an additional form to file along with that. So we would Thank need the exempt form. Yeah, we, um, we've had this form way before clear cooperation um, back, you know, back so that it, it was, it was sort of as a, as our way of having a coming soon so that if you needed to get painters in or you had repairs to do or whatever mm -hmm. is how this form was created way, way back when. Um, 
So now if you are going to have an exempt property, you would use the exemption form in conjunction with this one, but we have all of our um, sellers sign this, even if they are ready to go on the MLS within 48 hours, because it also includes some wire fraud language and it also lays out what public marketing is. So we've incorporated some of the clear cooperation language into this existing form already. Okay. Um, if you guys want to look over that and see that it's still kosher with you, but um, we did try to sort of marry the clear cooperation rules with this waiver. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So it sounds like you all are on top of it. You already have company policies that um, keep you from violating any of those rules that we have out there. So that's great. Um, I'll be happy to take a look at, at your form, um, but I do know that our exempt form would be one, even if yours mirrors it or takes on some of the same language, you'd still have to have ours on file with us um, in addition to yours. Yes. All right, so thanks for bringing that up. And again, thanks for staying on top of it and hopefully keeping your agents uh, in line and cooperating with everyone. Yay. <laughs> Fingers crossed that you can control all of them, right? <laughs> all right. All right, yeah, another issue that we have is the garage versus the parking space. Um, and that came into play when we put condos into residential to where again, all types were built into one. Um, and then your condo or your urban living where we had, we had to come up with some type of parking because um, you ha maybe have assigned parking spaces. And then what that did for the residential folks was to say, oh, I can now tell everybody how many cars you can park in your garage or in your driveway. And that was not the case, but we tried to fit condo living into the residential world. And so that kind of messed up residential folks. So yeah, garage versus parking space, we have an issue there too. So yeah, submit those. We'll get them all corrected. We'll get the data squared away. Don't feel like you're a burden on us. Just submit them. Again, we want accurate data, just as bad as you do. So make sure you are submitting those and we'll get them corrected. All right. Anything else? Is everybody surviving the whole areas being gone? I don't want to open up a bottle of worms on that, but <laughs> but we have kind of put in a couple of things into play. I don't know if you have recognized it on your maps. You have layers now that you can turn on on your map. So if you open up your layers, you can turn on a county layer. Well, it will show you the boundaries of all of your counties. And then within that, if you zoom in just a little bit further, you can turn on your zip code layers to where you can see what zip codes are in what counties and use your draw option to where you'll know exactly where you're drawing those areas using those layers and those boundaries. So try to incorporate a couple of things that would help with the area removal. For those that are new and really didn't have to deal with areas, this was not a big deal for you all. But for those seasoned agents who really got used to areas and building their searches, it's been a little bit of a struggle. So we tried to incorporate a couple of things that would help you out with not having areas here. All right, so I wanted to be sure everybody was aware of our layers you now have on your maps. They've been a huge help even for us, knowing what zip codes are in what areas. All right. Anything else you have for me? Lots of things going on in the system. Look for new changes. We won't stop that. Um, check out our trainings. If you've not done so yet, we're still, every day we're on Zoom teaching a class. So if you want to know a little bit more about Real Tracks, how to use the system, you're still maybe a little uncomfortable with it, go right up to help, sign up for a class. We've taken all of our two hour classes, we've condensed them into one hour deep dives of parts of the system that you may need help with. So that listing input process, we've got a class for that, going over how to keep your properties off of those third party portals if you wanna stay private there. And then you can see too, just getting to know the system, CMAs, mobile class, 
using everything on real tracks on your mobile phone has been a huge improvement so check that out come to those classes they're free they're just one hour and we'll run you through everything pretty quickly um, and they're very detailed so take advantage of those join us in our trainings we love to see you all there all right so again that was under help sign up for a class all right well you all have been a great crowd hopefully this has helped a little bit even clarify some things one more chat oh yes thank you thanks rebecca for joining us and everybody else thank you so much for having me out and again hopefully this will help i will share this recording with teddy and that way if he needs to he can share that with everybody else um, or if you just want to shoot me an email, I can send it to you as well. Did anybody need to see my business card again? Everybody get, got that? The contact info. All right. We'll definitely reach out if you need to. Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of your week. And we shall see you hopefully soon in person, maybe sometime. <laughs>